eventually when it came time to shoot it, I was very fortunate to just have like this block of free time in between two other films I was making. And I don't think I'll ever be that lucky in life again. The Oven Age uh, is mainly set across one uh, very sweaty day uh, in 1999 in the least glamorous suburbs of Melbourne. A boy who is about to turn 18 uh, wakes up uh, for what he thinks is going to be the best day of his life. It's the year 12 ballroom finals um, and he's about to compete except his dance partner calls him, she's just woken up in the middle of nowhere on the other side of the city. He has to convince her older brother to drive him to the other side of Melbourne, uh, pick her up, get her dressed and get them back in time. They don't really make it to the dance finals, but their lives do change that day. <laughs> Your Macedonian ex is gonna kill me. Oh, chill. He won't. Uh, initially we were planning to cast two different actors for each of the ages because I didn't think it was physically possible um, for someone to especially play 17 and 28. So Tom Green was the first one that came through and quite early actually. And what also became apparent was like, even if we found someone who would match him physically, you know, as the 11 year older version, like the, what he does with his eyes isn't something you, an actor could pick up on and carry on. So it's like, okay, so he's definitely playing both ages. And then obviously that meant Nicola would eventually end up having to be both ages as well. And um, there were very few uh, guys who could play either. <laughs> so the notion of finding someone to play both seemed really insurmountable until um, Elias Anton's tape came through. And you know, along through this whole process, which took months and months, there wasn't really a backup for either of those two roles. So, you know, I felt I was confident there were the two best choices. And then I was like, well, I hope they get along. <laughs> when they eventually meet, and they did. Um, and you know, I hope the aging works emotionally rather than just physically, and I think it very much did. It was one of the most moving experiences of my life to watch them, you know, enter 2010 for the first time on set, and just like, um, you know, it's like they're growing out in front of my own eyes. And just that experience in itself was so beautiful that the film is just a bonus. So we had 20 sh shoot days planned and then uh, the 1999 section was meant to be the first 13 or so and then we're gonna have like five days off. We finished 99 like three days early and that was it. We shot the film in three and a half weeks. Dude! Hey! Relax, dude! Where's the dress? The dress! Man, just chill! Burgundy! Let's take a moment! With fringes! It's fine! Normally the pattern is you shoot the establisher, then the mid shots and close ups and so on. I, I work the opposite way because the most of every scene is made up of a close up, if it's a relationship drama especially. And a lot of the story can be built in close ups, it turns out. So I had planned uh, as a, you know, plan B and a strategy to shoot um, other kind of cap coverage. And sometimes we did just for backup, but very rarely. I think the most important feelings happen in close up. And if you have enough clarity that you can convey through that, that's really most of your movie, you know, <laughs> most of mine anyway. <laughs> By the time we started shooting, this is just the easiest shoot I've had in my life. It was like, we finished two days early and had like a four day rap party. And even editing, like it took a long time for the first version, but the first version is very close to the final one. And it was just a dream run and like a beautiful experience. Like I don't ever anticipate repeating it. Um, I feel like I earned it after like 20 years of being the most failed filmmaker that ever failed. The, you know, my second feature at least was really quite smooth. <laughs> Romantic? I think the amount of people of all ages and backgrounds and uh, queer and non-queer alike that have come up to me at the end of a movie, you know, in tears going, how did you know my life story? Um, it's really moving because I thought I was writing just mine in some ways and even then in an abstract sense. Um, but the fact that the film connects to, you know, people from very radically different backgrounds to me and this, it speaks to them as intensely as it does to, you know, uh, queer guys uh, my age and younger and older um, is that feeling I'm after really 